Going on to problem three, we're going to be looking at even more multicast on a network. So we have this network given here where the circles marked with lowercase letters are our routers and the boxes with capital letters are our hosts. In the first half, the same way as in question one, we're going to be using DVMRP. And in the second half, again, in the same way as question one, we'll be using core based trees. So we're told here that at the start, A and E are members of group one. So I'm going to give them some blue here. A and E are members of group one. And yeah, so in question one here, A sends a message to group one. After all non-membership report messages are, have propagated, which links remain available for source A group one? Before I start answering this question, I want to point out um, this here in the problem. So why do we have to specify both the source and the group? So with DVMRP, remember that a different tree is built for each sender to a group. So every time someone wants to send to a group, a tree is built from that sender to everyone who's in the group. This means that we have to specify um, what state we're talking about. When we ask which links remain available, because there's a different set of links for each source sending to a particular group, here we have to be very clear. This is about source A, group one. Uh, whereas to contrast this with core-based trees, um, with CBT there's a single core and a single tree built based on that core, and to send everyone uses the same tree. Anyway, so A wants to send a message to group 1 in this problem, and I'll do this in red. So which links remain available for source A group 1? So the first thing that happens is, because A hasn't sent before, A will um, send to router A, and then router A will, uh, will uh, flood to all of its neighbors, and this will continue happening. So every router will flood to all of its neighbors. So, in effect, we're broadcasting across the network. Now, remember that in DVMRP, the way that a host joins a group is by telling its first top router that it wants to be part of the group. So, in this case here, A knows that it's part of the group, group 1, and E knows that it, that it has a child that's part of group 1, and that's it. Those are the only two members of the group. Um, and so, after this packet from, from host A is flooded on the network, uh, first this, these, all these links are, form a tree by ignoring any packets that don't come in on a link to a router on the link that that router would use to reach the sender. So in this case, for example, um, so F would receive that packet from everyone that's connected to it because everyone floods that packet, but it'll ignore everyone sending to it except for the link that it would use to reach A. So in this case, to get to A, F would send to D, right? So F, D, E, A, and then host A would be the shortest path to get to host A from router F. So it'll ignore um, the packets that it receives from B and E and just take the one that comes in from D. This leaves us with a nice spanning tree. And now we're going to prune our spanning tree. And so in DVMRP, first the packet gets sent to everyone, sent to everyone over a tree, and then hosts that don't need that packet, uh, or routers that, that don't need those packets, prune themselves. A router doesn't need the packet if it doesn't have any hosts connected to it um, that would uh, need the packet. And in that case, it sends a prune message up to its parent, whoever sent it that packet in this tree. And at every step along the way, if you're uh, a leaf router, so you've only got hosts connected to you, then if none of your hosts need the packet, you send a prune message. If you're a core router, you're somewhere else up further in the tree, like F here, then if none of your direct children routers um, in this tree, if they all send you prune messages, then you prune yourself and you continue propagating up. So here, 
B has no need for this packet, so B will prune itself. C has no, uh, no need for this packet, so it prunes itself. F has no need for this packet, so it proves itself. So D has no need, so it uh, prunes itself. And that's that. And E knows that um, host E attached to it as part of the group, so it forwards that packet along to that host. So the only links that remain up are A, 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 E, and E, E. OK, great. So now C adds itself to group 1. Immediately after this, who knows that C has joined group 1? Remember how a host adds itself to a group. So C will add itself to a group by telling its first top router that it wants to be part of the group. And the first top router remembers that. So C now wants to be part of the group. And it tells uh, its first top router. And that's it. That's all that happens. Notice now that um, we have a bit of a problem. If A were to send again, uh, F has already pruned itself from the tree for source A group 1. So how is C going to receive this packet? And we'll see that later in the problem. So only C knows. Little C, which is router C here. And now E sends a message to group 1. Which links remain available for source E group 1? As I mentioned earlier now, see this, this is different from part 1 where we were talking about source A group 1. Now we're talking about source E group 1. So this is going to be a totally different tree. So here uh, I'm going to do this in purple. Um, actually we'll grab green. So E will be sending a packet out. And now this is building a new tree. So we have to start all over again with DBNLP. The packet is flooded by each router first. And the routers that have hosts attached to them that are part of the group will forward that packet off to that host. In this case, A forwards it to A, C forwards it to C, right? And then B and D don't do any forwarding to their hosts. Um, along the way, Oh, our tree is built. The reason it's a tree is because we ignore packets coming in on links that we wouldn't use to reach the sender. So in this case, if B wanted to reach E, it would send to A. And if F wanted to reach E, it would send to D. So we get a tree. And now um, anyone who's on this tree prunes themselves if they don't need to be on the tree. So B prunes itself. C doesn't prune itself because C is, uh, host C is part of the group now. So because C needs the packet, F also needs the packet. And it needs to be on this tree. So, so does D, and we're left with a tree looking like this in green. So links that are left available are A, 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 E, what? E, 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 D, D, F, F, C, and C, big C. Okay, great. Question four, B sends a group, a message to group one. Is this possible? Well, yes, in multicast, non-members are allowed to send to the group. So sort of a trick question there, right? B is not a member of the group, so how is it gonna send a message to the group? Turns out that's allowed, so simple answer, yes. Um, what is the route that that packet takes from B to E? So now we have yet another set of state for DVMRP. We have another sender sending to group one, the same group. So we're gonna do this in pink. B wants to send, so remember our packet as before um, gets flooded. Our hosts ignore the packet coming in from um, everyone except the link that they would use to get to the sender. So in this case, E gets to um, host B by sending to A. So we're going to ignore coming in from 3. D gets to host B by going through, let's see. So if we were going to go through F, then we would have 
4 plus 1 plus 1, 6, the total link cost of 6. If we were to go to through router E, it would be 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1, so 5. Yeah, so that looks better. So D goes through E, so we're left with a tree now. Right? These pink edges now make a tree. And the routers that um, have hosts attached to them that are part of this group um, send directly to those hosts. Like this. Yeah. So what is the route that the packet takes from B to E? Well, from B to E, that packet is going to go B to little b to A to E to big E. Another way that we could get the same answer is just by noticing that the path that a packet takes um, in DVMRP will always be the shortest path from the receiver to the sender, just backwards. Because of the way that we um, avoid loops by ignoring packets that are coming in on a different um, port than, than the one that we would use to reach the sender. How long does it take for B's message to reach all members of group one? Um, well, this isn't too bad. This will just be the longest of all the shortest paths from each receiver to the sender. So here, the path from host A to host B is um, takes five, right? I'll just say A to B is five, then E to B takes one plus one plus two plus one, also five, and then C to B is one plus one plus four plus one, so seven. So the slowest of those is seven. So in part seven, um, suppose that the pruning information expires. A, B, and D form a new group two. So pruning information expiring means we can erase all the state um, on the links, the links that are members. So these first top routers still know that they have someone connected to them that's in part in group one. But now the links have forgotten what um, the, the, the tree is gone. The tree has expired. And we have this group two. That's A, B, and D. So group two is A, B, and D. A sends messages to groups one and two, B sends a message to group two, and D sends a message to group one. What state does router F have? Okay, so first of all, what is meant by state? So the state that a router holds, um, according to lecture, is that um, it, it holds on to the source group pairs that it um, removes itself from. So these non-membership reports. So it'll each router will remember who it said it's not part of. And so that way, when a packet comes into it, it can drop it. Um, so for this first message, A sends messages to groups 1. So the, the A sending the message to group 1 I'll do in purple. And we can just trace the path that this message would take to all members of group 1. So group 1 is in blue here. Um, right, so this message in purple um, passes through F, so it saves no state, right? Specifically, we're saying that the state that a router holds is when it removes itself from a tree. Um, then sending the message to group 2, I'll do that in brown, let's say group two. The message from A to all of its members in group two follows these links. So in this case, uh, F would trim itself from the tree, right? The resulting tree doesn't include F. So first everything was broadcast, all the nodes are part of the tree, and then they trim themselves. F has no children, C does not need a packet that's headed for group two. So F will hold on to um, the source being A and the destination being group two. That is what it sent a non-membership report for. 
Okay, then B sends to group two, which I'm gonna do in this orange color here. B sends a message to group two. So B's message to group two goes like this, one, two, one. And then to get to D, it goes like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so again here, F is not part of this tree. It would have had to prune itself. So uh, the other state that it holds here is B2. And finally, D sends a message to group one. If D wants to send a message to group one, then I'll go like this. It needs to reach C, and the shortest path from E back to D as well, and the shortest path from A to D. Yeah, so F is also on that tree, so no state safe for it there. So the result is just A comma two and B comma two. That's the only state that, that um, F holds. what messages took the longest time to send and what messages took the least time to send. This should be easy. We can just go back and see um, for all of these messages, it turns out that the message from B to D took the longest. Remember B um, sent a message to group two. So that message took um, in black here, one plus two plus one plus one plus two. So that's seven seconds. B to D took seven seconds. And if you just look at all the other messages that were sent, uh, the message from A to E was the quickest. You know, it took three seconds. Seven seconds from B to D, and three seconds from A to E.